morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and I was always told, out of voice of radio. So today, we need to take a look at Barrascuda. Now, that's something I've never said before. I've never said, hey, let's take a look at Barrascuda. We've never had a Barrascuda to go and have a look at. It's our first ever Barrascuda. Although, and this, this still haunts me a little bit, right? When they revealed Cramorant, they showed us this image of Cramorant spitting out a Barrascuda. And I didn't start making predictions about what that Pokemon was, etc. They revealed that Pokemon sneakily when they revealed Cramorant. And there was very little conversation about it. And frankly, ladies and gentlemen, I feel a little bit silly. Hey-ho. But yeah, Barrascuda, we've got one. It's been translated by the lovely David Hockman, and we need to have a little bit of a chat about it. Now, if we start off with the basics, it's a stage one with 120 HP, which is fine. But, I mean, the gold standard really stage ones, we're looking at Naganadal. And I use it as an example a lot because it's a stage one, it sees a lot of play, a lot of play, and it's about as high as we get on those kind of stage ones. We're only 10 short, we'll probably be all right. But then there's plenty of stuff out there like Sylvalli that naturally hit for 120 damage, and that means that they will KO you rather than being 10 damage short. It is a relevant thing. Retreat cost of one is nice because of U-turn board. Weakness to lightning... Here's the thing, right? You've got a whole bunch of stuff like more Pico or Tapu Coco V that don't hit that much damage initially, but then again, they can use Electro Power, but then again, that's kind of a waste to get a KO on Barrascuda. And then we get the bigger stuff like Pikachu and Zekrom, or indeed more Pico V or Tapu Coco's main attack, and you're already getting a one-hit KO anyway. So I'm not sure how relevant the weakness is here. I don't think more Pico or Tapu Coco are going to use two Electro Power to get a one-hit KO. But you're a water Pokemon. That means you can use Frostmoth to accelerate energy. Or you can use Naganade or Quagsire as a nice little combination. It means that you're hitting weakness on stuff like Reshiram and Charizard or indeed any Welder deck. So you know what? I'm all in favour, but what does it do? Well, the first attack, one water energy, 30 damage. I don't think we're going to need to spend very much time talking about this one. You see, ladies and gentlemen, it's just not great. It's just not. There was a time when we had Choice Band, and you would combine Choice Band and Hitting for Weakness, and we'd go, well, maybe actually... Maybe this could work. Maybe this could be good. As it is, we've got Vitality Band. And with Vitality Band and Weakness, you're hitting 80. Which isn't terrible. But it's not terribly inspiring either. It's not a, it's not a terrible attack. It's just not particularly good. And it's not particularly useful. And it's on a stage one. You give me this on a basic... Okay, I might be a little bit more excited. As it is, it is fine. It's great in an emergency. Better if you're hitting for weakness. Not an attack we need to spend too much time having a look at. But the reason Barrascuda gets its own video is for the second attack. The second attack absolutely gets its own video. You see, what we've got for one water energy, 130 damage. 130 damage for a single water energy is good. There must be a catch. There is. You see, you do do 130 for one water energy. That is entirely true. But you also have to discard two water energy from your hand or this attack fails. If you don't discard the water energy from your hand, you don't get to do the damage, which is slightly upsetting. But once again, it is 130 damage for a single energy... On a stage one single prize Pokemon. This isn't one of those. Oh well, this is kind of annoying. It's never going to work kind of things. You've just got to put a bit of effort in. Now what's really interesting. Is this reminds me extremely much. Of the Golduck from Sun and Moon. The Golduck from Sun and Moon. For a single water energy. On a stage one. Did 60 damage. For each water energy you discarded from your hand, up to two. Now, the difference is Golduck could discard one and do 60. Barrascuda is discard two, do 130. Or don't. 
There's no ifs, buts, or maybes. However, you've got an extra 30 HP. You're doing an extra 10 damage. You do not have free retreat, unfortunately. This is really good. Now, there is one thing that Golduck had that, unfortunately, this doesn't have. And that is a Starmie from Evolutions. The Starmie from Evolutions had the rather wonderful ability Space Beacon. Once during your turn before you attack, you may discard a card from your hand. If you do, put two basic energy from your discard pile into your hand. Saw so play with Volcanion for the whole steam up thing, but it did also see a lot of play with Golduck. And Golduck was not a powerhouse deck. Golduck was not the top deck in the format. But it still saw a lot of play. And it still did all right here and there. Again, it wasn't a phenomenal card. It did not win a huge amount of tournaments. But it saw play here and there. And it saw a little bit of muted success. And I think this is better than Golduck. Now, one of the big issues here is you have to get the energy. Now, if you happen to be going second, Energy Spinner is amazing. Let's you search for free energy. But let's not forget we got Full Bucket the other day. Or well, we got it revealed it's in the same set. And Full Bucket is Professor's Letter, but you're only allowed to get Water Energy. You search your deck for two Water Energy and put them into your hand. Well, yeah. For this particular Pokemon, this works out absolutely beautifully. The single Water onto Barraskewed is not the problem. That's a given. That's going to be gotten. The difficulty is... You need to get the two water energy into your hand. So you need something like full bucket. Or we got lady that lets you search for four. That's fine. It is your supporter for the turn, but it will also deal you two turns worth. So eh, it's probably worth it. Point I'm making is we've got ways to get the energy. No, it's not particularly easy. Yes, we'd rather have the star me from evolutions, but get over it. It rotated out. I mean, certainly right. If I'm playing an expanded, I'm choosing Barraskewler over Golduck. I think, and I, I believe this quite sincerely, I believe that Barraskewler is a better option than Golduck here. I just think it's a plain better Pokemon. But it's not phenomenal. And it's not phenomenal, right? It really isn't. But it doesn't need to be phenomenal. When you take a Pokemon like Reshiram and Charizard, and we'll get back to that one in a moment, you're talking four energy on a free prize Pokemon. It's got to be phenomenal. If it's not phenomenal, you're really wasting your resources. With this, you've got single prize Pokemon, you've got single energy, and 130 is nice. Now, we talked earlier in the intro when we were talking about the basics, the difference between 120 and 130. This hits 130. That is rather lovely. But you got things like Reshiram and Charizard. Now, I know you will be 10 damage short of Reshiram and Charizard. But I mentioned Vitality Band earlier. And it lets you do an extra 10 damage. We could also talk about Shrine of Punishment that puts one damage counter on each EX and GX Pokemon between turns. That will also do the trick rather nicely. So there's your one hit KO on that. So you're getting most of the relevant single prize Pokemon. You're getting... Pretty much anything that's weak. I mean, the other fire Pokemon that really is seeing a lot of play with Sword and Shield legal at the moment is Torkoal V. And Torkoal V is legit. It is a genuinely good, viable Pokemon. It's got 210 HP. So you're getting an easy one-hit KO on that. The reality is this probably isn't going to be a deck in and of itself. I'm not sure it hits the higher-end numbers. Now, a fun deck for League... Yes. As a side note, this is going to be a monster at pre-releases. Because in pre-releases, you've always got extra energy in your hand. So this is going to be lovely at pre-releases. Outside of that, I really like it. I worry that you're going to be KO'd a bit too easily, while not necessarily KOing as much as you need to. And you need to swarm Barraskewda and get the energy in your hand a bit too often. But with a couple of other Pokemon, it's nice. And it is nice to see a water Pokemon that I'm not saying it's good with Frostmoth accelerating energy. You don't even need Frostmoth. Although, to be clear, it, you know, Frostmoth's still the gold standard for water Pokemon. You'll probably play it with Frostmoth at some point. I like it. I'm giving it free Wossies. I don't think it's phenomenal. I don't think it is the best deck in the format. I do think it is a great pre-release card. I do think it's a fun league deck. And I do think it is a genuinely efficient, good attacker. 
But like before when we played Goldak and Starmie and it was basically its own deck, it proved not to quite be good enough. This is better than Golduck, but I still don't think it's quite good enough on its own. But as a good Pokemon to be put with other stuff, yeah. Let's do this. But I want to know what you think. So let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcg radio if you want to support the channel get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff head on over to patreon.com slash ptcg radio where you can do exactly that and please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash wassy plays where you can find out about a whole bunch of games that don't have pokemon in but we love them nonetheless but by far the most important thing as always look after yourselves till next time would you Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.